things uh, ran through my mind as I was watching, but I've seen the episode now four times, and it didn't occur to me till this time, and this may be the veil visor that I wear, <laughs> that this is an, uh, another illustration of how a man in authority ignores the advice <laughs> of a woman with more experience because he wants to play, in effect, big man on campus and nearly gets everyone blown up. Um, so there's a feminist point embedded in there, which is I, I really through the whole series. I noticed that both of you were watching the episode, and there are people who don't like to watch something once they've done it. I've only watched five episodes of the season. I intend to finish <laughs> filming. I I am a little bit like that, um, mm -hmm. but uh, Leslie is always agitating for me to to uh, to see what we made. Um, it's a really good show. Uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, <laughs> um, no, it's, it's uh, yeah. So I do actually fall into that camp, but it's important. It's important to review and um, and you know. I like it. Yeah. Well, that's um, nice. Also, I realized I haven't seen this for a long time, mm -hmm. and I got terrified. You would ask me a question, and I'd go, oh my god, what episode was that? <laughs> that so, is that uh, yeah. Yeah. so it, it was actually really great to see, but of course, all I could think of was all the protection things, because the shot at the very end, there were four hours of night when we there were There were long in days in, in Germany. In some really Germany. long days. Quite so hard. literally, the, the morning birds were singing, you know, and, and it was like two in the morning, you know. Yeah. So. But you are inevitably flooded with all of the kind of dumb minutia of, yeah. of just making the thing happen, you know, what sandwich you ate before, and you were self-conscious about your onion breath or whatever, you know. How to see that camp was. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, now that was uh, an episode, now it's, Obviously, it's much easier to control things when something is mostly shot in the studio, when you can control the lighting, you're only dealing with a few actors. That looked very, very tricky because you've got a lot of extras, and it's not like, you know, where they're, they're not professional extras. So you've got real, the camera really has to, everyone has to sort of be doing their job, even if they're not a trained actor. Um, now that's some sophisticated work that a director, you know. Uh, it has to do, yeah. It was it was thoroughly um, planned, and and uh, yeah, the 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 um, the, uh, what, the thank you. The storyboard. Storyboard. Yes. <laughs> scoreboard. <laughs> so the storyboards were were elaborate, and uh, and Leslie attacked each scene with clay. You know, she looked. You know, she X's them out with a big red marker that's on a. You know. It becomes like a ritual. Yeah. But that was actually a really tricky situation because literally we had just gotten to Berlin and we were setting up a whole new production, which we do every year because it's a whole reboot every season. And uh, we were doing that the second week of shooting. Uh, and uh, that that's a big sequence to, to pull off. And of course, I was so excited. We're shooting Germany for Germany, Berlin for Berlin. And they write, Syrian refugee camp. <laughs> 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 and really, at first, I thought it was a joke. I thought, oh, they're all playing a joke on me. You know, and no, it was no joke. But everything was very planned, because it, I hope it looks like we have a lot of money, but we actually don't have a lot of money. We're very clever with how we use our production dollars. And so in that kind of situation, not in the bathroom facilities on set. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's not where we spend our money. Yeah. Um, but what was what was amazing is having this German crew, and that was a, the storyboards were a great way to communicate because still there was a lot of things that was, were falling through Lost the cracks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I would imagine that it, because you're shooting. As much as you storyboard, it yes. must be very. There must be things that happen with everyone around. Because for one thing, you could not recreate that kind of the look, you know, the debris, the sort of bombed out debris, the rubble. You could not do that in the studio. What, what they would do in Hollywood is they would do it CGI, right? And it would, you know, look fake. Right. And and in fact, we're mostly a location show. Like if we have a couple of days on a stage, that's a lot for us. Yeah. And it feels like a rest almost. It's like, oh, we get to be on a stage? Wow, cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Harbor. Yeah. Um, do, do the seasons, do they all 
can you look back at certain seasons, and I'm not asking you to rate them in terms of quality, but can you look back and say, this one was really hard, this one was especially hard, or do they, after you've done it for, for years, does it become like one long military campaign, <laughs> one long war in which there were separate campaigns within that? A little like a war, one <laughs> long war. <laughs> Remember the Damien days? <laughs> <laughs> that was a big yeah. experience. Yeah. That was a, he was a major <laughs> relationship, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so that feels like a very long time ago. But also, I don't know. I mean, that was so fun in, in the fourth season when I have that, that hallucination. Um, mm -hmm. But I, Claire, really did get to act to a Damien again. He was truly resurrected for me as a performer, and that was such a relief. I, I didn't realize how much I had missed him, and, mm -hmm. you know, until, uh, until he had reappeared, and our, you know, we fell immediately back into, mm -hmm. you know, that, that rapport and, and that dynamic that we had spent a lot of time establishing, you mm -hmm. know, so that was interesting. Um, I'm going to set up the next clip by saying that one of the things I, I thought about today was um, the series 24, Jack mm -hmm. Bauer, all the, those you know, heroics. Thing. That series started in 2001 when the country was in a real kick-ass mm -hmm. post 9-11. I think we really thought we could go in there and just bam, bam, bam. And at the beginning it seemed like we could. And then but by the time we get to Homeland, it's sort of, it's a recognition of we win some and then we lose bigger things. Um, and I'm going to come to the, I'm actually going to start the clip early because I want to uh, ask you about playing all the, the clip. Uh, we're going to see a clip that became incredibly uh, newsworthy, was picked up all over the world because of, of its incredible uh, prescience. And I think it's, I think it speaks for itself. We could run that. We have drones, we have all tracking satellites, we have all the computerized... My son has a drone from Walmart. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's a poor guy's roof, but he's that much. And yet at the same time, on the big, in terms of the big map, we seem to actually, in many ways, know less than ever. I mean, unless the people who are briefing you, they know what's coming, but they can't freak out, you know, because but journalistically, nobody saw or saw the rise of ISIS. I mean, that was just... Yeah, yeah no, that, you know, it, it certainly, well, it's interesting to hear them now talk about, uh, you know, AQ, Al-Qaeda, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, you know, they're the big picture thinkers. So mm -hmm. they, we haven't been hearing a lot about them, but they're not to be discounted, for sure. So that came up a lot as well. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things in the, in the episode, that we screen that uh, scene between Astrid, the BMD, mm -hmm. you know, officer, and and uh, Laura, the journalist. Mm -hmm. I mean, that discussion is about all the issues of privacy, mm -hmm. you know, and yet it's an intellectual discussion, but it's made very and they're both right, and yeah. they're both right, and that's one of the things that for us is so intriguing about Homeland is that you know both sides are correct, mm -hmm. they're absolutely correct, and what do you do with that? Yeah, because no, in the beginning, the first few episodes, you think it really is just going to be a kind of Snowden yes. sort of scenario, and then it goes, but that's what great series does, it goes deeper, wider, it takes all, it goes into all these alleyways and corridors. Yeah, I, I mean, I think that our show is kind of astonishingly neutral in that way. I mean, mm -hmm. we're provocative, right? right? And we ask questions, but I, we don't have a strong bias in either direction, and I think it's one reason why people keep watching because it's very inclusive. Mm -hmm. um, now, the next clip we're going to have, uh, I believe it's it's when you are confronted oh. by the ghosts. Yes, with, um, you're trying to, yeah. Oh, oh, crazy, crazy land. Yeah. <laughs> in, crazy in other words, land. is the phrase <laughs> off for meds? Oh, there, yeah. yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
So we had absolutely no control of anything in that station. Mm. So shooting there, they those let us. Actual commuters. Those were who actual I'm weaving in and out of. <laughs> yes. uh, no idea that <laughs> they're being filmed. Um, yeah, because apparently when there's a body of people that large, it's kind of public property. But yeah. uh, they wouldn't. Yeah. They would let us shoot, but mm. they wouldn't let us close anything, control anything. So we're literally we have you know two cameras mm. and the the sleekest crew we can manage. And literally, <laughs> Claire is like, we're holding her back, and then, okay, go now. <laughs> oh, no, 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 go back. <laughs> I mean, it was It was, crazy. it was really nutty. It yeah. was uh, like a student film or something. Totally, totally. <laughs> um, yeah. And then people, you know, just normal people trying to get on their subway right. would be like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, but... Um, Yes, and then later on, when uh, you know, so in that, and that, I mean, we did that over the, a series of days, obviously. But um, the latter part of of that scene, we actually did have more control over. Yes. But but we shot that uh, the day after, after Paris. Paris, and that was really hard. That was hard. <laughs> that was very hard. It was just a little too, um, too close. Too close. Yeah. No, that felt too pressing. Yeah. yeah. Like in a way you don't. Is yeah. Homeland well known in Germany? Yes. I mean, okay. Very. So it's sort of incredible that no one said. <laughs> yeah, oh, right? Uh, yeah. Clear also, that hair is pretty <laughs> conspicuous. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not a subtle shade <laughs> of blonde. Um, yeah, but uh, anyway. No, they didn't. Go figure. Yeah. Well, maybe it was all moving too fast. But, no, but how does that affect you? The night before, when when the news breaks, I mean, th is there any uh, part of? I guess you, you're committed to shoot. You can't say, well, maybe we shouldn't shoot. This yeah, I, I mean, I think well, Leslie made we, a big announcement yeah, to we, the collective, to you know, all the extras were gathered, all the crew, and and she had a microphone and and you know, yeah. acknowledged what had happened, mm. but um, which was. In which was necessary and appropriate and helpful, but yeah, it was just a and ironically day. that train station or that platform because it was actually different than the big train station which was Hot Bahnhof um, is under the Reichstag, so it was under the German government is mm. where we were shooting, and that felt even, yeah. I mean, just so so strange. Mm. Yeah, I'm actually amazed they let you do that. I know. So are we. Yeah. yeah. Because I don't think in New York. And there was, there were. So, I can only tell you, there were so many things we couldn't do. Yeah. So the fact that yeah. that's what they let us yeah. do yeah. was just kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. The bureaucracy yeah. was fascinating. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> do you enjoy doing the action scenes? I mean, do you look forward? Um, more when I'm not pregnant. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, every time I'm, you know, feeling weary or, you know, bedraggled or, you know, tested, I just think, well, I'm, I'm not with child, you know. Um, well, we were both laughing about the driving because oh, they right, because <laughs> I am a terrible driver. So, and this is the worst propaganda. So um, we looked at the scene where she it, jumps in the car yeah, and drives like, back. Uh -huh, sure. <laughs> like, um, uh, no, every, the crew is terrified whenever I have to take the wheel. Um, Everyone out of the way. <laughs> yes, no, I mean, that's not a joke. That's yeah. what actually happens. Um, no, I mean, I am a physical person, and I, uh, it's fun to play somebody who, you know, has authority and, um, and kind of acumen and, you know, and uh, can, can save the day. Sure, why not? I but mean, also, Carrie, unlike a lot of uh, the action heroes on TV and in movies, even when she's in action, she has to be expressing emotion because, you know, Peter Quinn will pop somebody in the head right. and basically maybe blink once, <laughs> but he's not, you know, he's not, you know, whereas your, Carrie's face is always naked and open. There's yeah. always a range of, mm. you know. And what I love, I, I came from choreography and I love doing action sequences if they're character based. If it's just blowing up a truck, that doesn't interest me. But, but you're very good at that, too. But that, I, <laughs> you know, I like that. No, but I, I do, you know, when it's about something, when there's content driven, then fantastic. Mm. 
But you really do know very well how objects move through space. Yes. I mean, she mm. choreographs these action scenes like she would her dancers. I mean, it's not, it's not incidental. It's not you know coincidence that that is her background, and she is so adept at. Well, one of the things that's I think is very different about televisions compared to movies is it's part of the choreography, which is. In television, the the best TV shows involve action. You are aware of every moment where things are in space. Mm. Movies often cheat through hyper editing, so it's like the That's person's true. here, and here's a hand, and here's a shot, and here's this. But in, for example, and it's the scene of driving out. You are aware of every moment. This person's here. That person's there. Here's this pile of rubble that has to be driven around, and that's part of what actually, in many ways, makes television more, you know, compelling as an action uh, field than that's movies. That's such an interesting insight yeah. and. Thanks. But, <laughs> but yeah, but actually, w as a as a young filmmaker, when I made the transition from from dance and choreography, my first important teacher talked to me about how important it was to ground people in geography. And he's mm -hmm. a huge film film director, you know. But that that's where you know where you are, mm -hmm. you know. That that's actually really important. And, and that relates to what you were just saying. I mean, you're only interested in it insofar as it tells a story Moose and yeah. Yeah, and reveals something of the central characters. Absolutely. And then one of the things that fascinates me about television is that you really have to know what story you're telling. You have to know what the theme is, what the subtext is, because if you only have nine days to shoot something, mm -hmm. you know, you have to know what the dollar scene is and what the yep. 25 cent scene is, because you don't have all the time in the world. So you need yeah, to you know. You have to prioritize. Yeah, you have to know your story really well. So there are really no moments well. when, in, when you're shooting when you're saying on the set, so what are we trying to say in this no. scene? <laughs> no, we don't have the time. I mean, hopefully we do all of that dialogue before. Mm -hmm. You know, and if it's a complicated scene, we'll get together, we'll talk about it, we'll have a rehearsal, whatever, whatever's necessary. Mm -hmm. Because I think that's one of the things that's where people who work in television, there are certain people who fall by the wayside because they can't make the deliberate, clear, Right. The pace is incredibly fast. Yes. Yeah. It's and it's I feel a bit spoiled now because when I work on a film I'm sort of like yeah. Woof, <laughs> Can we get this going? Yeah. Yeah. Well there's a lot they shoot movies up in my neighborhood and yeah. it's amazing how many people are on the the walkie talkies and phones to each other and a lot of it is the bringing coffee from here to there's a lot of, there's a lot of you know uh, Infrastructure to it. But you have to stay a lot hydrated. Of coffee. There Hydration is really important. Hydration. Yeah. And the catering truck. We won't yeah. that. Um, one of the most harrowing scenes in the season, we're not going to show it, mm. but we're going to show part of the aftermath, is uh, when Peter Quinn is in the glass chamber. Yes. And is, is uh, you know, basically his, what we think is his murder is being broadcast. It was a harrowing scene to watch. And what we are going to see is, well, I often, I often wonder if I need to give spoiler alerts, but I'm going to assume if you're here <laughs> that you are conversant with chapter and verse. <laughs> In any case, the scene that uh, the last clip we have is, I believe it's the last clip, is of um, the last scene uh, of the season. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we could do that. Oh, about that? Yeah. About, about him writing? Yeah. Rupert wrote that. Mm. Alex Ganza said to, to, to Rupert, what do you think Quinn would say to Carrie? And he wrote that letter. He said, well, I can't, I can't, I can't. talk about it. I just yeah. have to write it. And that's mm. verbatim. He just cut and paste. That was Rupert's. So how do you feel? It's got to be. <laughs> How beautiful is it I though? Know. I mean, I mean I, it was just, it's so wonderful because it's so kind of true of Quinn. And, and, and there is, and, and Rupert also is, you know, there's part of him that is, he's not immediately available. I mean, there's an opacity, you know, mm -hmm. um, a reservedness, but you go, you go deep and it's, it's just, there's just uh, such richness and, sensitivity and 
and and intel intelligence. I just thought it was so beautiful. I was just uh, yeah. Anyway, so yeah. And it, the first time he recorded it, we were sitting in that same mm -hmm. hospital in a room, uh, just getting a you know yeah. a, a scratch track. And literally, I burst into tears. And like, there's no crying in baseball. You know? <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> I didn't expect it. It was yeah. just one of those, like, oh my goodness. Yeah. You know, um, this guy who never says anything says everything. Right. You know, in such a poetic way. Yeah. Um, and not a saccharine way. A, no, a, not at all. You know, just a re mm. really beautiful, eloquent way. And uh, yeah, and it, it all, I mean, it. So it, it connects so immediately with that first image of Carrie, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's he's the only one that really sees her completely and yeah, accepts her. But yeah. also, that's Alex. I mean, I think yes. he's quite, quite, I mean, that was true of season four. I mean, he really likes to have it called back yeah. um, to complete the circle pretty, yeah. Well, one of the things in the scene is he talks about the darkness and embracing the darkness, but of course, then we get this light. Right. A light, yeah. Right. And um, I, I know you can't answer this and won't answer this, but of course, everyone is wondering <laughs> about <laughs> the fate of Quinn. Um, <sighs> and you don't really want to know, <laughs> no. right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no I, what what I will be interested in is once it's actually on the air of like, I'm always interested in how they figured it out. Yeah. You know, I don't, I'm one of those people, I never want to know things in advance. Right. right. You know, I never want to look at deleted scenes. I never want to look at- Well, we didn't know. Now we know, yeah. but we did not know uh, uh, until at that, time, at that right. point. And we shot a couple of different versions yeah. mm -hmm. just in case. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, that's, that's the thrill of television too, is that we really are making it up as we go mm -hmm. along. I mean, there. well, maybe that's not the case for every show, but that is the case for ours. And uh, Alex is an actual surfer. Um, mm -hmm. He's a really great surfer. Uh, and I think it's, he takes a similar approach to, to mm -hmm. his writing now, style. Do you follow social media at all? when the show is on the air? Do you pay attention to it? I looked at Facebook literally for the first time today in my <laughs> life. <laughs> Ever? Ever. And I looked at my mom's page, because my makeup artist, Mateen, is, you know, mm -hmm. we were talking about Facebook, and what is it? How is it, you know, because <laughs> I do Instagram, but, you know, to like four people. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, so my mom is way ahead of me on social mm -hmm. media. Uh, th this is kind of cool, I thought. <laughs> There's something to this. <laughs> yeah, so, no. The reason, the reason I ask is because I don't know how far in advance the shows are shot, so basically people will start saying, well, they better do this oh. by, you know, they better, and then, you, and then you think, well, they've already shot those episodes. Mm -hmm. They're going to do what they're doing. <laughs> but, but do you pay any attention at all to... Uh, you know, the recappers, the social media? Because I, I would think actually it would drive you crazy. Uh, no, I, for me, I, I don't. I mm. don't read anything because I figure if I, you know, I want to believe, oh, you know, of course I want everyone to love it. We mm -hmm. work really hard. We try to make it smart and, you know. But I feel like if I believe the, the bad stuff, I have to, or if I believe the good stuff, I have to believe the bad stuff. Like, I mm. just can't read any of it. It's better not to. Yeah, we can't make the show by committee, by especially yeah. when you know yeah. we're responding to all these disparate voices that we can't trace and or I have be in real conversation right. with. And, and I think it would make me upset too. <laughs> I'd want to explain. Or, uh -huh. Well, yeah. also when people who who are reacting in real time, yeah. they're reacting to what they they see, and in fact, they don't know where uh, realize where a show is going. You can go back and look at the first comments online about shows like Breaking Bad, yes. and they'll say things like, well, you know, maybe once they get rid of this Jesse Pinkman, <laughs> right, the right, show right, will find, right. you know, who needs, you know, or they dump on certain uh, characters that right. they don't like, and then it's like, and then in time, it's like, no, they, the people making the show really knew better. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, now we're living in a time of all this fan fiction, I mean, the Fifty Shades of Grey was Twilight fan fiction, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, those conversations are, are 
are valid and real and mm -hmm. can become, you know, really successful piece of entertainment in their own right, you know, mm -hmm. if, uh, but if they wish to take it that far. But yeah, that's just a different thing. I mean, we hope to agitate, you mm -hmm. know, uh, we hope to provoke co stimulating Discussion. discourse yeah. Yeah. and we want people to uh, be anxious and uh, engaged and upset, you know, have, have, have opposing mm -hmm. ideas and talk views about it. and talk yeah. about it. So, so yeah, so we, we, we yeah. want for there to be chatter. We mm -hmm. can't control what that chatter is going to be. Mm -hmm. um, so. Have you read the uh, fan fiction for Homeland? <laughs> No, I haven't. I haven't either. I'm sort <laughs> yeah, of, I am not. I'm sort of fascinated. But yeah, I mean, but I think that's true. I mean, there's there's this whole other medium now. There's this mm -hmm. whole uh, and, right. um, uh, but I don't think that's a conver That's not our conversation. Yeah. You know, we're. But I do hope it provokes people to discuss and mm -hmm. think and converse and. Mm -hmm. Well, I think I think this season in particular because of the incredible, uh, scary yeah. ti timeliness of it. So I heard b before we went on that you were actually going to start shooting in August. Yes. And because Usually we start filming in May, so we in would, May. Yeah, yeah, this is atypical. But with my command of the calendar, that is two months away. It is. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's very soon. How do, you, how do both of you gear up for the new season? How do you? Well, we're, we've been afforded more time this year than we ever have to refuel. I did a play. I did mm -hmm. a pilot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so we had a little bit more room to, yeah. you know, to to deviate, right. uh, because without these added couple of months, you know, I've recovered and then I'm 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 up to bat again, mm -hmm. um, and uh, especially with a you know a toddler that mm -hmm. uh, all of my down time really you know the off season is dedicated to that this kind of recovering my life. Um, and uh, yeah, so we had a little more give, and I get to like be I have a summer. Yeah. Uh, I like swam in a pond last <laughs> week. That was nice. Um, but but yeah, um, my husband's about to start filming his show, The Path, this week, and I feel him. You know, all the mm -hmm. kind of the uh, the uh, uh, adrenaline, you know, spiking. And uh, I know that'll hit me in mm -hmm. in late July. It's it's involuntary, you know. And, and I'm we're, I'm already in it. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, uh, now I don't know if everyone knows, but the, you're going to be shooting a lot of this upcoming season in New York. That's yeah. true. Yeah. And you know, shooting in August in New York. <laughs> Please don't remind me. Yeah. Such a yes. festive time. Yeah, <laughs> it's better than uh, August in North Carolina, yeah. where we were mm -hmm. for the first three seasons. So, um, and I'll take August in New York over, you know, February in New York, which mm -hmm. we will also be doing. Yeah, we'll, we'll um, hit all yeah. of the so big yeah. times. Um, but you know, I born and raised. I yeah. actually live here. I haven't yeah. lived in my residence in my hometown in. <laughs> A really long <laughs> time. I mean, my son is three and a half, and he doesn't know that he's a New Yorker. <laughs> he's an everything elser. Um, so yeah, it'll be nice to. It'll be nice and to. And so, w you'll be able to go home at night. Yeah. In New York, and but also when you're away, you must come back and go. Oh, that store is gone. Oh, this totally. Is gone. I mean, you're because gone for two gone. weeks, yeah. and uh, yeah. it's been re. You know. And yeah, transformed. I now live in L.A., mm -hmm. um, and I've been in my house two weeks this year, and I couldn't find towels in my own house. <laughs> you know, it's like, you um, know. Well, you look very clean. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and dry. <laughs> so <laughs> it worked out. <laughs> um, yeah, but I'm thrilled to be back in New mm -hmm. York, to be working in New York. I'm very excited. Is, is it going to be a lot... What is it, it going to be like in terms of red tape, crowd control? Is that going to be? I think that's going to be harder. I mean, yeah. that's not something that we've ever had to contend with before. I'm friends with Lena Dunham, and I visited her on a girl set once upon a time, a while ago mm -hmm. now. But, and I was shocked. I mean, it, there were so 
m there were so many paparazzi and just hordes of people, and it really was a fishbowl kind of scenario. And I thought, how do you concentrate like mm -hmm. this? I mean, we've been in fairly remote places where we've kind of cloistered and, mm. and protected from that. Nobody came to visit us in Cape Town. No, <laughs> it no, took two days no. to get there, and not in Charlotte. You no, know, in we Charlotte. were so, yeah, we were buffered. But yeah. I mean, look, I say that, and probably nobody <laughs> will be able to care oh, okay. the way no. they did with girls. But um, yeah, anyway, well, so I'm. We'll see what that's like. Yeah. Um, is there anything you can give us about the direction of the upcoming season? Hit it. Other woman of homeland. <laughs> a sketchy outline. Um, um, yeah, we well, I think, I think we can say, because Alex said this recently fairly yeah. publicly, that it's going to... Um, it's going to concentrate, I, and I know very little, so this mm. is, you know, I, we need Alex here to do this for me. But uh, it takes place during the time when the, the president has been elected but has yet to take office. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, that transitional period, um, which I think is really fascinating mm -hmm. because when have we investigated that mm -hmm. moment? Um, and, you know, what is that transition like and how does the CIA um, brief the president-elect and influence the president-elect? And, and this president-elect will be female, but, but she'll be kind of... <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> but she will also be kind of a composite of all of the different candidates and a... Uh, uh, a, a, a kind of, well, not rebellious necessarily, but um, uh, she's challenging norms and, uh, and is a little threatening for that reason. But, but gets along with Carrie Matheson mm -hmm. pretty well. <laughs> well, it's good to have friends in high places. Yeah. Uh, Absolutely. But, and, you know, I think, th I, so I think it'll be that, which, you know, mm -hmm. is what we're all kind of, uh, wrestling with, fascinated by, you know. Yeah. And one of the things, again, for us uh, is that, you know, every season it's a complete reboot. It's mm. a new show. And that's both challenging and thrilling and, you know, we, we don't go back to the same old hospital set. It's mm. like, it's a completely different show in some ways, mm. but with characters. Yeah, and I think it is, a l I mean, look, I'm, I'm not comparing ourselves because the Wire is the best show ever, and you know, okay, yes, but, yeah. but it is that same idea that we we kind we consider different different facets of of this world that um, we're in. every season. So, I mean, it, I, I think you know our writers don't want to retrace their steps, and they want to remain uh, you know challenged and um, and uh, exploring unknowns, and and that you know so. So that's true for everyone else. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Well, and the fact that you'll be starting in August means that nothing you do is dependent on a, the actual election in our laughingly, you know, what we consider the real world, but right, right. more and more the surreal world. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah, but when, sure. when will the first episodes appear? January uh, 7th? So Did you say? No, oh, no, G that's when we go back. No. no. Uh, when, is, when is the first? Well, January, early January, January right? Right. I think it's January 8th. 8th. Sherry? Yeah. Does anyone, I think it's January 8th is what I recall, but I could be wrong. Next year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Next year when we will be uh, cold. Cold and inaugurating yeah, we will be cold. a new president. Indeed. Yeah. Um, so I want to thank both of you. Is there, is there anything you would like to bring up that I, that I didn't uh, get into? Is there any, uh, any uh, torrid tales of. Torrid tales? Of facts. <laughs> No, 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 I just, whoa, here we go again. I think yeah. we're very spoiled because we have an incredible team. And, you know, um, Alex Ganza has put together a writing room, which is very unusual in TV, that's basically all showrunners. So, you mm. know, it's, we're, we're in a world where the best idea wins, and uh, it's very exciting. I feel like, mm. you know, I feel very spoiled spoiled in some way to be dealing with this kind of challenging material and complicated character and mm -hmm. um, you know I love things that exist in in the shades of gray and in our kind of world of ambiguity and 
we get to hang out there. <laughs> yeah. And one thing I notice is when you look at the end credits, yes. there are a lot of women's names. There are a lot of women's names. Which is not name. always no. true. Yeah. Um, and that is yes. part of what makes the show the sensibility that it has. Okay. So yeah. thank, thank both thank of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.